Hello and welcome to the Car Care on Channel and welcome to this 2014 Lexus GX460 which belongs to our very own Jose who's our newest member of the team and he's our cameraman, editor and one of my best friends. Jose took his family on a trip before he's starting full time in our shop on a trip doing some heavy off-roading. Here's some footage of that if you're interested. So during that trip to the dunes, I believe, what were they called, Jose? Silver Lake. Silver Lake. I don't know where that is. I'm not into off-roading, but it seemed pretty fun. He went into a kind of an up then down dip in the nose of the GX, dipped down and caused some damage. So in this video, we're gonna investigate the damage. Let's see what we have, what's going on. And we also have a scraping noise. So before we get this car on the lift and inspect, Let's go take it for a drive. Let's listen to the noise. We'll visit the Tesla graveyard, see how that's doing as well, and a lot more right after this. Okay, let's go see what Jose did to his car. So, this is beautiful GX. And I have to say that it is beautiful because Jose, of course, works for the car care nut uh, organization or shop or however you want to call it but uh, Jose is an absolute car care nut actually he was a viewer before he was part of the team so let's go see what kind of damage we got here what kind of noises we have going on so Jose we're gonna go up this hill do you think that's a good test So Jose said no, I think he's done with off-road adventure damage for now. But let's let's go in this open spot and let's try to hear the noise. I hope you can pick it up on the microphone. So we have to go in reverse, full lock, and then you hear that scraping. I hear it, I hope you can pick it up. I hope the microphone is picking it up. Yeah, I hear it from the front. But the weird thing is, it only happens when you go in reverse. I don't hear it here. And that's kind of strange, actually. Huh, well, let's drive this car as we visit uh, something that we want to visit all the time. Let's look at the Tesla graveyard. How is that doing? It's been kind of getting better. Okay, I take that back. It just, yeah, I take that back completely. It is not better. Anyways, the first thing I notice is steer wheel slightly off center. You might want to do an alignment, Jose, which we can do with the shop. All right, let's drive and see. We have a pole to the right. Steering wheel is compensating this way for the pole. It's a pretty massive pole. So there is a maneuver. I cannot do it right now because there's a car behind us, but hopefully on the way back. If there's something loose in the suspension, your steering wheel is off or the car is pulling to one direction, you do a sharp kind of jolt and if things turn the other way, you have a suspension component that is loose that just changed direction completely. So let's see if we can actually do this. You need a little bit of speed, but you have to do it safely. Like we're going here, let's go like 25. It's pulling hard this way, I'm gonna jolt it. See, it did not change, it still wants to go that way. So we don't have something loose. Let me try it again. We do not have something loose or shifting in the suspension. So I think uh, other than the massive pull this way, which feels like tire pull, folks, at lower speeds, I feel this car wanted to go this way. Usually that is tire pull because at such low speeds and we're going 20 miles an hour, unless your alignment is like upside down, it's not gonna pull from an alignment pole because alignments you need to start 
feeling it at higher speeds for it to pull. But this, I mean, we're going less than 20 miles an hour and the car is already wanting to dart that way. So this is likely tire pull. Well, let's take this car back in the shop and uh, we'll see what kind of damage we have. And we're trying to figure out that scraping sound. It sounds like a backing plate, but why does it only do it in reverse is what's a little bit of a mystery. But let's head over, let's put it on the rack and we'll check it out. So let's take a look underneath. You notice uh, half the car is missing here. So the brunt of the impact was in this area right here. So these are all bent. This cover, which uh, he was able to salvage, is actually not usable anymore because this is the cover that goes up here on the bumper. All the tabs broke off of it. Jose, you did get lucky because uh, this can be replaced, but if it ripped the tab off the bumper, then the bumper would have to be replaced, and that's a lot more expensive than this little piece. But these are bent back, and I want to actually take this off and see if we have any other damage upstairs. Let's do that real quick. Let's see. It's been raining all day. Yeah. yeah. Good luck to me doing that. There we go. That's not good. That's actually one one rattle. Piece. Oh, this one is loose. Yeah, you. Uh, yeah, that's that's not gonna happen, Jose. This is a very big rattle waiting to happen. So if you come around, show them, Jose. Should I say your handiwork? It's not <laughs> your handiwork, it was a fun trip. So these have rivets to the reinforcements and two of the rivets are gone and this one is about to go. So, hmm, we're gonna have to do some experimenting here. I wanna see the repair manual of these, or the parts manual, if these are separate, could perhaps take this bumper off and re-rivet them. That's an option, we can do that. But I'm more concerned of the frame and any damage on the frame. Looks like you got lucky, because this looks pretty straight. I, don't, I see all the sand from the dunes right here. But uh, no more damage. Condenser is intact. It's usually the first one that takes the grunt. And then the radiator is also intact, which is good. Okay, so this is all just cosmetic stuff. Then you have my least favorite thing in the planet, a zip tie, because this entire fender liner actually ripped, and this is temporary until we get the other piece that ties this in. But let's look further past that. This shield got completely damaged. We actually have a new one already. Some of the parts started to arrive. We have a little scrape here. But otherwise, I see like this is the area of the damage. I don't think we have any other damage. Looking up here, engine is, of course, safe and sound because that's too far up. So the brunt of the damage was actually here. So we're gonna try to see what we can do about this without having to replace the entire front, like the actual bumper, not the bumper cover. But let's walk around, let's check Jose's car. Jose, we have been talking about tires for a while. We just had the uh, pull. These tires are done for. What is the date on these tires? 2016. I think we got our money's worth out of these. These are ready to go, my friend. And you notice this is what happens to tires when they get old. Do you see how that appearance and pieces falling off of them? They're dry rotten. And dry rot is usually accompanied by very unusual behavior from the tires. This one is the same. This was actually, I think, the worst one. You see pieces falling off of it? It's time for new tires. You see this? So this is probably our pole. Let's go look at the rear ones. Rear ones are also dry rotten. And do they have the same date? Where is the date? 16. Yeah, same thing. 48, 16. They do have dry rot. Not as bad as the front, but they definitely. So uh, four tires. Very brave man, Jose, went on the dunes with these tires. And he actually made it with a small accident, but it's not too bad. Well, 
I don't see any other damage suspension wise. I don't have any movement after all. This is GX. Not expecting it to be damaged. This is not a fragile car. And in the rear, we don't really have much to move, but still, we'll check it. That's good. And that's good. I don't see any other damage. It looks like the back, this is the lowest point. That was not damaged. So I think the damage is just in the front because it basically, it dipped into the into it like an incline and it hit the bottom. That's what happened. So it was just the front. And one thing about GXs, I don't know if you guys, we've talked about this on another video. You notice that this chain, they all have it on the spare tire. You notice how we have a zip tie. So this is a common thing with these, even the Forerunner is the same way. If you drive by like a wall and you accelerate and brake a little hard, this chain will actually swing and hit the wheel. It'll make a weird noise. So uh, if you hear that weird noise and it bothers you, zip tie your chain to the wheel so it wouldn't keep going back and forth and hitting the wheel. But let's do this because we still have that scraping sound. You remember that scraping sound when we were in reverse? It's kind of mysterious because it's only in reverse, which doesn't make sense. I noticed this backing plate, if you look at it right here, it's been pushed, something pushed on this because this is definitely bent here. And that was the side that was making the sound. If you look at this backing plate, for example, it is straight. So let's take both front wheels and let's kind of start with this one and see if we can see where that backing plate is, in, is hitting the rotor. Okay, let's take the wheel. Let's see if this wheel is stuck. Yeah, it is. coming out I hear it there it goes okay so so if you ever have a bent packing plate you're gonna make sure your rotor is sitting and then we're gonna look behind it and I actually see it touching right here this is so odd because it's touching right here even though it's hit here. But that's the only place where it's super close to the rotor, like right in this area. I don't see anywhere else where it's even close to it. So it is just this. I'm gonna just push on this back and plate back. I think that's it. I don't see it touching anymore, especially the inside. Yeah, that's it. I don't see anywhere else where it's uh, perhaps here. Something about back in place. When you push the back in plate here, you notice it moves here. So always grab it from two spots, kind of move it. Now I think if you look right here, it's going to be very hard to see. Do you see that scrape mark? That's all it was. It's gonna be impossible to show on camera. That's all it is. It was just a tiny little scrape. Only when you put the suspension in a certain load and it'll move and then it'll hit it. But just to make sure, let's go to the other side and uh, double check that because even though I'm almost sure I uh, heard it from the driver's side, let's just check this one. Is this one stuck as well? There it goes. This one, ooh, this one is actually scraping even more. Good thing we looked at it. I don't know if you see this shiny part, little mark right there. I'll take a video on the side. It's impossible to show you on camera. Oh, there's another one here. I'll take a few little videos so you guys can see them. But I'm gonna kinda bend the back and plate back and then we will take a look at the good light, making sure that our backing plate is far away from the rotor. Yeah, I think that's it. Should we take a look at Jose's brakes while we're here? Brakes are pretty good. Got at least six, seven millimeters. We're good. Noticing this, uh, this cover is also missing. And uh, do you have a front timing cover leak? Yes. It's a small one. Sorry, Jose, we're going to give bad news to your car. Mm -hmm. 
but there's a very small front time and cover leak. Nothing out of the ordinary. Cam towers are dry. And then let's go look at the other side. I think, I think we talked about this in the past that the front cover was leaking on one direction. Yeah, it's here. Let me try to pull and get a tool to pop this cover off and we'll take a look. Pop this cover on and take a look. Yeah, we do have a little bit of a front timing cover leak. We'll get you guys a video, but this is where you look at it. The same thing, cam tower here is not leaking, so that's good. But um, it's not a huge leak because I don't see anything slain underneath it and look. I don't see anything underneath. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of wetness, but nothing over the top. So I think we're good. Well, here's what Jose decided while we were switching and lowering the car to get ready to film this section. These little brackets, he's going to remove them because that's going to be... That's going to be a lot of rattling until we figure out what we're going to do with the bumper. He might end up just replacing this bumper because we looked at it a little bit. It's not available separate, these pieces, and they're going to be very hard to bend back because they're very strong. And riveting them... Remember, Jose is a car care nut. He wants this done. He wants it done right. So he's either going to fix it well or leave it like this for his off-road adventures to be accident-free. Let's get these off and I think we're all set for this one. So we want to remove these and since this bumper is getting replaced anyways, there's only one way I can think of that we could remove this very easily. Oh, I shouldn't have said that last part. That was a lot easier than I thought. Here's one rivet. There's another rivet, which piece of it stayed in here. Probably leave it. So we don't want to fall in the bumper and make all kinds of sound. All right. Well, there you go. Now you don't have the rattling front thing anymore. And uh, I don't think riveting into these is going to work because these are heavily bent. And by the time we straighten these, we really don't have a reference on how far back they need to go. And then at that point, we're just guessing and gluing and let's just do this right. This is a nice car and let's just do a rear a front bumper properly. Or Jose wants to put a metal bumper, which I, if it was up to me, I wouldn't, but it's his car. But for now, let's put this cover back, which he actually got a brand new one. Here's a beautiful, beautiful cover. Which has, did you know that this is actually a lift point on the GX? So if you need to jack it up, this is a lift point. And that lift point sits right here on the, on the frame. But if you have a rusty one, to not do that because this will be this little cradle right here will be severely compromised and then you won't be able to let's hook this up right here there we go that's in let's get the bolts uh oh this is a blank hole I have to. Well, we are able. This is not a thread here left. Yeah. Mr. Jose, we're going to have to put a. Uh, so, if you ever have this and you don't want to just leave it the way it is, if it's stripped. You're going to have to put a long bolt through. You're going to have to drill the hole to take whatever thread is left. Put a long bolt. You can actually, there's a hole at the top. You can put a nut here. Let me see if we have a bolt long enough for this. So we don't have a bolt long enough for this. We actually ran out. We usually have them. We use them so much because once this strips inside, this is welded to the inside of the frame. But Mr. Jose, we will get back to you. Let's put these on. I think with just this cover, 
This is already well protected. I don't like that the condenser is wide open. And we'll need to replace this bumper. We'll need this piece right here. And then we'll need to work on this side pieces to make sure the fender liner is secured. But otherwise, not too bad, not too much damage. This is all really cosmetic stuff, nothing in a rush. I would, though, get this covered up before winter because uh, this is, gets front row seat right now to rocks and debris on the road, and the condenser on these is a little bit on the expensive side. But there you have it, folks. That is the adventures of Jose with the GX in the dunes. Not too bad damage, and I think this is going to make noise. So we're going to have to find a bolt for this at least temporarily until we get the right bolts in but no suspension damage and that's really what the gx is made for they're made for off-roading so you're gonna go off-roading with it just be careful because some of the newer ones especially like mine i have a 23 has a sport package we're never gonna off-road with it but they are so low in the front that you could actually hit it if you dip into something and the front comes down but otherwise little front timing cover leak which is not really to a point where we'd want to address it tires tires are long overdue and we'll get this bolt and i think we don't have a lot more we check the brakes check any movement nothing these struts were actually replaced not long ago by me this was i think a year ago jose something like that and otherwise trucks in great shape jose is of course always coating it with fluid film and whatnot so it doesn't have a lot of rust it's due for another coating. I see if you saw a few spots when we were filming, Jose, right here. You're gonna need to touch those up. Mm -hmm. I remember when I did the pre-purchase inspection on this car, I was very impressed with it. It has just right around 125, 127,000 miles right now, but it was in really good shape and that interior looked spotless. I remember that day when we did that pre-purchase inspection. And then one thing Jose mentioned that he was not happy about is this cover. He actually bought it online did have some scratches on it. He was really not happy with that. But um, I think after the next trip to the dunes, this will look a lot worse. So it's okay. That's, this will bother me too, by the way. Folks, please turn your attention to the comments and leave a comment for Jose. First, welcome him to the team. Tell him, glad you're okay from the little adventure here and that all this will be fixed and it'll be in order. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. Until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.